Hi, I'm Andrew on Custom Cards, where we teach you how to design your own Magic the Gathering cards. Today we'll be discussing Magic the Gathering's color pie system. Many people don't understand the color pie or its importance, so I'm going to break it down for you. Imagine that Magic had only one color. Because there is only one color, there are no lands that tap for multiple colors of mana, and there's only one basic land which would make up the majority of your mana base. Because of this, you can play any card in any deck. No matter what your strategy, you can include all the best cards in the game. So why wouldn't you? Of course, every other deck builder will be doing the same thing. This means that every deck is playing all the same best cards, to the point that the decks aren't even distinct anymore. There will only be one best deck, and all tournaments will consist mostly of this deck, with some minor variations. This game could be fun to play for a little while, but people would quickly get tired of the repetitive gameplay, and tournaments would be miserable. Magic would die quickly as people move on to a game with more depth. This is the point of the color pie. It separates the cards into five distinct groups, or colors, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. If you want to play a card of a given color, you need that color's mana as well. But each color you add dilutes the density of your other color's mana sources. This encourages you to play fewer colors. On the other hand, each color you add can fill in the weaknesses of your other colors, which encourages you to play more colors. This creates a beautiful balance. How many colors should you play? This is why the color pie is so important. If a color gets a card that fills in that color's own weakness, which is called a color pie break, it can give you the upside of playing more colors without the downside of having to dilute your mana sources. This breaks the balance between cost and reward. We saw this recently in Standard, with green receiving top tier card draw in Once Upon a Time, and high tier creature removal in Oko and Wicked Wolf. These are things that green can do, but it is not supposed to be the best at them. Combined with ramp, the thing that green is supposed to be best at, and you could relatively consistently play turn 2 Oko, turn 3 Wicked Wolf, turn 4 Nyssa, and there would be no reasonable sequence of draws that could consistently stop you. On top of which, if you stumbled a bit and somebody did try to stop you, you could simply play a top tier counterspell to stop them. Another thing green isn't supposed to do better than blue. Effectively, this deck got the best of three colors, while only playing two. And the blue was light at best, especially considering green was there to help you find the blue source, so it may as well have been one. This imbalance is why color pie breaks are a problem. Furthermore, every break can be used as a precedent to justify more breaks. When designing cards, it is vital not to undercut the weakness of the card's color. Now the color pie does change over time, but those changes are slight in the grand scheme of things and slow to occur, so there's no reason not to learn which colors can do what, and hold to that. For more information on what effects each color is supposed to be allowed to have, check out this article by Magic Head Designer Mark Rosewater.